Users wait for the entire page to load even if the single, is, uh, single piece of data is needed. Restriction on single request or response. So if we don't use Ajax, then it is a re restriction on single request response. Like if first request is gone to the server, then it might take some time and we have to wait it. So that's why we use Ajax so that we don't have to wait for the response. We can do other activities as well. Need for the complicated UI components. As I mentioned for the live score, right? We, we don't want to wait. So in on, on that uh, type of uh, uses, we have to use Ajax. So that is why we will be using Ajax. Now, what are all the technolo technologies involved in that Ajax? Okay, so first we will be using JavaScript. JavaScript is basically the main part of this Ajax. Ajax is supported using the scripts only. So for binding everything together, we will need basically JavaScript. HTML and CSS. HTML and CSS, I suppose everybody will be aware the, that is for the front end for presentation and to provide the styling for the com component. So whatever on the page you are seeing that button is of a uh, maybe green color or blue color that that is all coming from this HTML and CSS styling. So that is for presentation purpose. Third is the HTML, uh, sorry, XML HTTP request. So that is basically an object which provides this asynchronous data retrieval. So this ob using this object, we can request to the server and using that object, we will get the response and then we can display it. So this is the main object behind this asynchronous behavior of Ajax. The next is document object model. So document object model is nothing but a tree structure for the components displayed in the web page. So if you remember, I think uh, you might be knowing this HTML, right? So HTML and XML have tree kind of structure and to retrieve the components for of that HTML and XML uh, languages, we use uh, this DOM object. So that is the document object model so that we can use uh, uh, whatever uh, the div or uh, any elements uh, given in the HTML language. The next is extensible markup language XML. This may or may not be used. Uh, not necessarily we have to use XML. It is used to for, uh, it is a format to send data from client to server. We can send in other formats also like as mentioned like JSON and many others like text format can also be used. So these are all technologies and in, are involved uh, for Ajax. The next is nothing but Ajax approach versus classical approach. So as I mentioned previously, uh, in the classical approach, what was happening is whenever user did any activity, then uh, it was given, the processing was given in the backend and on the server end. Processing might take some time if there is some large data transmission or something huge needs to be processed. So until that processing happens, user activity cannot be done. Once the processing completes from the server end, then only the user proceeds and can do any activity until that the activity on the user end or the client end is blocked. So this is the classical approach and it is known as a synchronous approach. Okay. Here in this Ajax web application model, that is asynchronous approach. What happens whenever any input comes? Okay. It goes to the backend, data transmission happens, processing happens. It might take a lot of time, but everything happens in the background. In the foreground, on the client end side, we can do any activity which is not related to our request. Any other activity also can be done. It is not blocking our usage of the whole site. We can go ahead and do other activities, use our site normally until the request uh, is processed and response we, we receive. So once we receive the response also, the whole page won't be loaded, we will be able to view or uh, the response whatever is get, uh, we get we will be able to see that response and we can proceed uh, accordingly but the whole page will not be loaded only that part will be displayed i can give an example of that also uh, we go through and uh, search uh, many things in amazon or flipkart and uh, you know buy products so when when you go to any of the product right you have multiple options of colors like uh, suppose you are buying headphones Okay, so in headphones, suppose you have three colors like red, green or blue, whatever. Okay, so one color will be displayed at a time. Now, when you click on blue, only that image part will be changed in that uh, whole product. And how that is done? That is because of Ajax. Ajax can be used there also. 
so any of uh, such things where we don't want to refresh the whole page we want to refresh a part of a page by requesting something at that time ajax is very useful so now how this ajax is works actually i said previously that we use this xml http request object but how basically it is how it is working and how it can be done from uh, javascript okay so a javascript function creates and configures an xml http request object on the client okay so on the client itself we create this object in the javascript function okay now the xml http request object makes an asynchronous call to the web server so first we create the object then we make an asynchronous call to the web server then the web server will process those requests will make some response and then then res that response is sent by the web server to the client the client then updates the html dom representing the page with the new data so when we get that response from the client right we have sorry from the server we have to display that response to the client itself so once we get it we can't display directly so for that html dom is required and in the html uh, we require to put that particular response in some div or some element so that the client or the final user can see that response on the page itself we'll see that uh, whole processing in this uh, image so that it will be more clear like we create an html uh, sorry xml http request object we send that request then uh, this is the browser this is the server okay so when we send that request the request goes to server part server what it does is it gets that request it will process the request it will generate some response it will create a response by whatever the processing is there in the server part and then send back the data to the browser then again the browser will process the return data that is the response and then you, uh, it will respond uh, get the response using javascript and then update the page content this update the page content is done using the uh, html and css part okay now the browser part is is the client part what is the server part so server part we can tell that whatever uh, we have uh, different technologies and different languages right so uh, you might be knowing about java php and different languages so all those languages operate on server uh, on java if you want to run a java file right you have to use apache server or some kind of server so that you can you know you uh, you can run that file so that that processing everything uh, happens on the server side so that is a server part browser is nothing but the html css or javascript part of your application so th that that is the client part of your application which processes on the we can say it is a front end part of your application and the server or the java code or whatever uh, different languages which runs on the server those uh, those are the back end or we can say the server part of your web application so all uh, so, so, um, sometimes uh, we can say that uh, this javascript uh, uses this uh, html css and combining with all those three we send a request from the browser to server server will process the request and then it will send back to the client or we can say the browser it will again process the request and display using html and css in our uh, page now what is this xml http request okay so it is nothing but it is an object and it is the key object to the ajax programming and its main purpose is nothing but to put an asynchronous http request to the web browser so basically this is the uh, lone object which is responsible for everything that can be done asynchronously this is the only object which will send the request to the server side and this is the object itself which will get the response from the server side and process it in the client end so this asynchronous call to the web server is used to exchange data with the server and is responsible for uninterrupted data load without reloading the whole page as i mentioned previously also it asynchronous call is nothing but it is a call to a web server made by this object is xml http request object to the server and it use it is used to exchange the data okay now when the data comes up uh, we don't have to wait for the page to reload it it, it, it will uninterruptedly 
load the data for us and it can be displayed on our page. Now, uh, this object has two methods which are main. It has other methods also, but two main methods uh, which are, are responsible for sending the request to the server. So first is open. So what this open method does is it specifies the type of request, the URL, if the request should be handled asynchronously or not. So it has three parameters. First is method, the second is URL, uh, sorry, second is URL and third is asynchronous. So in method, we have to give the type of the method. The type of the method can be get, post. There are some other methods also that is put, delete. But here I'm specifying only get or post. Get method will get the data, post, uh, post method. We can also give the payload and retrieve the data accordingly. The second is nothing but URL. URL is nothing but the location of the file on the server. So when you send the request to server, right? Server needs to know from which file it has to process the data. So you have to give the location of the file on the server, which will be evaluating your request, which will generate your response and then send it. So that location of the file needs to be given here itself and the URL parameter. The third is nothing async. Async is a Boolean parameter. It either goes with true or false. So by default, it is uh, set to true. Even if I don't give this third parameter, it will take as asynchronous as true. Asynchronous true means we want this AJAX functionality. That means we don't want to wait for server to get the response and we can proceed doing other things also. If we set it to false, then it will be again the classic method where one has to wait for the response. And once the response is available, then only next processing can be done on the client side. So that that, that is the parameter used. So this is the syntax. We can say HD, XML HTTP. This is nothing but the object dot then the method name that is open. The first parameter will be get. Get is nothing but the method name. Get, post, anything you can put. The second is the URL, URL file name or anything that is on the server side. Server file name you can give here. Ajax info.txt. We can give any file name which is already present in the server that is used to process the request. The third is given asynchronous true. We can give true. If we don't give anything here also, it is fine. And uh, it will take by default as true. Now this, this will do is it will open the connection between the client and the server, but it will not send the request. For sending the request, we have another method that is send. Now send takes one parameter that is string, but again, it is an optional parameter. We can again ignore this. This parameter is only used for the post request, sends the request off to server. So once we do the send, then only the request is going to send to server until and unless we uh, we don't do the send, it will not. If you do only this open method, then it will not send the request. So we need to do the send. Okay. If get get request, if method is given as get in this open, then we don't need to give the string part. We can directly give send as mentioned here in the syntax. That is XML HTTP dot send. Now, if we want payload to be given in the post request, then we have to give some string here also. Okay, so these are the two main methods used for the XML HTTP request so that we can give the request part to server. Now, coming back to the response part. So in response, we have two properties again, like uh, response text and response XML. So for uh, what the first part does is uh, the, uh, if we have uh, the syntax for this is the same as this one, like we use a dot open, right? The same way we can get this uh, object dot response text. So this property is used to get the text response from the server. So whatever response is processed in the server and we have to pass that response to client, right? So either it may be a text format, a JSON format or XML format. So if it is not an XML format, then we have to give response text. If it is an XML format, then we have to give response XML. Now that returns the response is an XML DOM object. As I mentioned, DOM will be used to get the data of that XML or HTML languages so if, if we are passing this response as an xml we have to give dot response xml so these two properties are used for sending the response from the server end next is the uh, properties of xml HTTP request object so first we saw 
those, those were the two open and send were the methods. Now we are coming back to the properties. Okay, so we have three properties which are important uh, of this same object XML HTTP request. Okay, XML HTTP request can be uh, in short, we can say it's a XHR, XHR object also because XML HTTP request. So it's an XHR object. So uh, this is suppose this is an XHR object. So we have first properties in ready state. So this problem is the status of this object. Okay, so what is the status? Depending on uh, the state, we have some uh, status. Like suppose if this value is zero, right? If when, when we are sending any request, then uh, this property will hold some value. Okay, when we are sending the request itself, it will hold some value. So on the server side, we can check if, if the status, sorry, on the client side, we can check if the status is any of these or not okay so if we check zero then the request is not yet initialized if we if we check that if, if it is one then we can know that the request has been set up or not if we want to check that the request has been sent or not then we have to check that this property's value is two or not okay so similarly uh, when we want to know when the request is complete so we have to check four basically mostly we will use this four only so when we send the request, we want to confirm that the request has been sent and it is, pro it is in process or it is complete or not on the client side. So how the client will know that the request is completed, it's in process, it is sent or not. Okay, so we use the states to get the knowledge that the request is in which state. Okay, this will be done in the client side itself. The next property is on ready state change. So this is again an XHR dot on ready state change. You can use it this way. Okay. Now this property defines a function which is called when the ready state property changes. So as I mentioned, this is the ready state property. Okay. So this property, when it changes, we can define a function which is called. Okay. So it can be used as this like XHR object dot on ready state change equal to some function. So this is a function which will process the response. Okay, so if we want to do something on state change, suppose two, then we will give uh, on state change two, I want to do this particular function. Okay, I will assign a function and it can do some changes. So this is on ready state change property. Now, next is response text. As I discussed earlier also, uh, this property retrieves the data sent back from the server. So we just have to do is XHR dot response text and it will give us the response so object value will hold the response that we get from the server end well the response text is uh, used to return the text response xml can be used to return an xml document object as i mentioned earlier response xml will be used when the response we get is in the form of xml that is we can use here response xml dot document element so it will give us the document object and dom object using dom object we can uh, use to retrieve all the uh, we can say elements of those xml okay the tree structure of that xml file or xml structure we can get it in the xml doc now next is an example i, I have just uh, mentioned the example of this ajax application how it is works so this is nothing but this HTML, sorry. Uh, this starts with an HTML itself. In HTML itself, we can use JavaScript. I think you might be aware of all this. So in H I've started with an HTML, then the script language is nothing but JavaScript. So once we start this JavaScript, I have uh, started this code. So I have defined one uh, variable that is XML HTTP request object that I have set to false first. Now I'm checking if that window dot XML HTTP request, this window is nothing but the object of our browser, which will allow us to get the client side window. Okay. So that window dot XML HTTP request. So if it is there, means if I can do that request, right, then I am setting a new, new object, this variable equal to new XML HTTP request. So this is for Mozilla. Now for different browsers, See, this is client part, right? So for different browsers, we have, we may have uh, different functions or we can say different objects which we need to define. 
So as we see for Mozilla, we can give XML HTTP request. For Chrome also, we can go with the same one. But for IE, IE is a little different. So we have to give as active X object. Okay, instead of giving this one, it doesn't work with IE. So IE, we have to give active X object. It will work in the similar way, but the name of the object is different. That's it. Okay, now I have defined this object, this new. So object has been defined, newly created. Now I have already defined one function which will process this, whatever uh, this object is there. Okay, so before going to this part, I'll go to my body part. Okay, so in my uh, this HTML page, what I have is I have body, I have h1 tag, I have form, uh, nothing but a button, and on button click I have given function name that is get data. Okay, get data function is here. Let me just give you an example in my system itself. So this is nothing but uh, the same program which I was showing you previously. This is the same uh, script. So here I have body part. Here I have uh, uh, H1 tag just to display this text on uh, my page. Okay. Then I have created one form tag which has nothing but a button. A button with has a value of display message. I'll show you how it displays. Then this is nothing but on click. On click, I'm calling this function. Now this function has two parameters. Okay. First parameter is data.text. And the second parameter is this. So ultimately both are strings. Okay. Now I have to go to get data function to know what processing it does. So I will go to get data function, which I have already defined in my JavaScript. So in JavaScript, the first part was the URL. The URL is nothing. This data.text is nothing but the URL that will help us define which file is there on the server end. Okay. Uh, in the op we will be using this URL to get the file that is present on the server end, which is responsible to process the request. The next part is the div element itself, where we need to uh, display the message. Okay. Uh, wh when we get the response, we have to display that response on the client end somewhere. So we, I want to display my message inside this particular div. Okay. So I'm giving that div here. So I'm getting all uh, those two parameters in my get data function. Now, first, what I'm checking is if that XHR object is there or not. If means it, if it is present or not, if it is properly defined or not. If yes, then it goes into this function. Then I'm creating, I mean, getting the div ID. Div ID is nothing but my target ID where I want to display my message. Okay. So that is this object which I'm getting. Now, next is XHR object dot open. As I mentioned, for, we have to do two things to send the request to server. First is use open and second is use send. Okay. So first I have to open that uh, object. Okay. Uh, sorry. Open the uh, open the gateway between the client and the server so that we can send the request. So using that open function, we will give two parameters. I have given two parameters. The first is get. The second is the, it should be URL. URL is nothing but the uh, URL I'm giving from here. Okay. So this will be the URL that is present on the server end, which is used to process the functionality, whatever is there on the server end and give us the response back. Okay. Now third parameter I'm not using that is asynchronous true. That because by, by default, it will take asynchronous true. If I give async true also, it is fine. If you don't give also, it will by default take as true. Okay. Now I have opened the connection. Now I'm checking this on ready state change function. So on ready state change, as I mentioned previously, it, we have to define a function and it will do the processing for us. Okay. So now we are checking the state. If the state is four, I can go back to repeat and show you what the state is. So if you see here, the state for on on uh, sorry ready state ready state if you check four that means the request is complete okay so here I'm checking ready state is four that means once the request is completed and also the status is two hundred 
there similarly just as we have ready state we have status also if we don't check this also it should be fine for uh, more precautions we can check that status is 200 or not so once my request is completed i want my re uh, response text so for what for the getting the response text as i mentioned previously we have a property named dot response text so i am getting this property i hope everyone is able to see my screen okay uh, so I'm getting this property and we are able to get that uh, response in this object using dot response text property. Now we want to display it at a particular point, right? So uh, as I previously declared this object, which is nothing but my target div. So inside that inner HTML of that, I'm just getting this response and displaying it here. That's it. Okay. Now this all is also done but this will not work until and unless i do send the request to the server so for sending the request i have to give dot send function or the method until and unless i do this part my request will not be sent so at the end i have to send this request and i've sent the request to server server will process it then we have to check the state it will come back then check the state, then get the response and it will be displayed in this particular target div. Okay, for uh, this, this is my only HTML code and page. So I'll just uh, let you know how I, it looks on the browser. Yeah. So this is my browser. As you can see, I have opened it. Fetching data with Ajax. This is the same as you can see here below. This is nothing but the H1 fetching data with Ajax. Then I have is a display message button. Here also we have a where it is display value is display message. So this is the button input type button with the value display message. Okay. And uh, there is let me refresh it. There is this text that is the fetch data will go here. So this is the text. Okay. Now on button on click this data will change. Now I have given this data.txt. So let me tell you what is there in this data.txt file. So I have created just a normal single text file, which is nothing but a simple text file. Okay. Which, uh, which is nothing but the normal simple text message to be displayed. Now currently our message is fetch data will go here now on click what my uh, what my function will do is on click it will go get the data from data.txt it will fetch the data go here get the response and in the inner html that is again in this target.div it will put the updated message the message will be as shown here this is the fetch data getting displayed okay so for that what do i have to do is i have to click on it once I clicked on it, you can see the message is changed. So what this means is we don't have to reload that page or wait for doing anything else. Once we click on it, only this part of the page is getting changed. This part is remaining as it is. So th this is what Ajax does. Ajax asynchronously fetches your data from the server, means, uh, means process your request, fetches the data from the server and responds back uh, on the page itself using HTML and CSS. Okay. So this is what basically the use of the Ajax is whenever you go to the, we can say the main example of it is. Let me go back to the so this is what my main code uh, did. Now the next is live examples of Ajax. So the main live example of Ajax is nothing but the Google search. Okay. Google in whenever in the Google, when you search, right, you go ahead and type uh, something, maybe Ajax. So it will give you five suggestions that uh, did you mean this or uh, maybe Ajax, JavaScript, something, something. Okay. So all that is coming from nothing but Ajax. Ajax is doing all that for us. It will process the request, fetches all the data from the backend. It will respond back and it will display in the Google suggestions. Let me show you an example of that as well. So th this is my Google, right? So if I go ahead and uh, suppose type Ajax. Okay. So I get this all the suggestions. So all the suggestions are coming from nothing else, but this is the Ajax functionality itself, which I showed you like on click 
we can uh, there it was button right i showed you here here it was a button click i refresh it i can see here it is a button click but here it is on key press okay google uses nothing but on key press so on key press if you do anything then it will fetch the fresh data from the server and it can display here nothing else on the google page will change okay so this is nothing but the ajax uh, and its use in our website development i want to just add one more thing here is uh, how how can we know that uh, this is the ajax request and you know uh, we can we can also see in the network tab i can show you a little demonstration how it can look in the network tab. so once you go to this elements in the development part here we have network tab so whenever you go to network tab here we have let me reload this page okay i have reloaded this page now whenever you go to network tab we have options like all xhr js css so you can see your xhr calls here xhr is nothing but xml http request objects so all ajax request or xhr calls you can see here itself so if i click on this i'll be able to see this call okay you can see the status is 200 type is xhr now this type is nothing but this xml http request object which is nothing but the ajax if you if i go ahead and click on this you can see the headers here and the response the response means whatever the response is sent from the server and we can see it here also so this is basically one way of knowing that the call is xhr or not we can we can see here in the xhr type is xhr or not we can see that the call is going is xhr or not and also we can see the response from here what is the response we get from the server end okay so basically this this is the my conclusion like uh, this is how we use uh, ajax in our uh, day to day life and uh, in website development whenever we use website development ajax is a crucial and a very particular uh, you know has been a part of website development in a very crucial way it is very important to use ajax nowadays because everyone wants every everything on click but nothing else should change on the page right everyone's want live score of cricket as soon as possible right so for that ajax is needed when you google search something you want suggestions which are relevant right for that ajax is required when you go to amazon you want color uh, changed right when you choose any product you want a color change but you don't want the whole page to be changed and refreshed right so that is when ajax is used so ajax is very important so uh, th this is what how it is working and this is how it is used in website development so that that's it from my side uh, thank you guys for listening or uh, you know bearing me for so long time thank you so much hinal uh, for sharing your valuable knowledge with us right we on behalf of uh, csc department will be uh, thanking you for the wonderful session that we have thank you so much okay thank you thank you very much